welcome back to the Jen Siri YouTube channel with me, Jen. As you can see, change of angle from the usual background. We're moving stuff around in our house at the minute. So welcome to my kitchen. This is where I do all my experimentation and make lots of mess normally. So it's not usually this tidy. But today I'm going to show you a lovely sensory messy play activity that's really good for fine motor skills development and understanding early object permanence. So I will talk you through it now and we'll have lots of fun. So today's activity carries on the plant and growing theme that I've got running through March and as always uses really simple, cheap, easy to find resources. So I'll talk you through what you need to start off with and I'll talk about some of the ways that we can use this with different learners as usual. So to start off with, I've got a baking tray. Now there's two reasons why that's there. That's to catch some of the mess um, and also to create a little bit of auditory feedback because what we're using today is gonna ricochet in a really nice way and provide a really nice sound. about these as well is that you can slide them directly onto laps so if you've got a learner in supportive seating you can just pop that on instead of the tray now the trays that come with supportive seating are great and really useful um, but sometimes they can be quite limiting from an access perspective so sometimes I find that with learners who have got really limited control having something low down means that their arms are automatically kind of in the position that they are usually in even though the tray is giving your learner a bit of support on that sort of supportive seating, sometimes being able to then kind of lift their arms up and then move their hands, like I say, even though they've got that support, can be quite exhausting. Whereas if you've got learners who are sort of putting their hands down straight and they automatically go quite far down, coming to them from where they are and using stuff at that sort of downward level can sometimes create a little bit more engagement. The great thing about that as well is that you can do submersion stuff. So you can use things with a decent depth. I'm gonna talk about this in a minute, but you can use things with depth so they can really, really submerge their hands in things. Sometimes with the trays that come with supportive seating to kind of get their arms sort of up and over can be quite an exhausting thing and quite hard to do. So it's just working out your learner, what's best for them. Um, but as I say, that's just a handy tip that I've kind of discovered. Before this activity, you are going to need pearl barley, which is a pulse that you can find in the supermarket. It's super, super cheap and makes a really good sensory bin filler or messy play filler. It's also great if you're looking for a seed kind of substitute instead of bird seed. Um, obviously you would normally cook it um, before you eat it, but if your learners do mouth it, it's not going to be the absolute end of the world. Now what I've done with the pearl barley, as you can see, is pop it in a deep bowl. Now this is obviously a glass one, you don't have to use glass if you think that's going to break or smash. Um, I'm not actually anti-using ceramics and glass with learners. I think if we educate learners to understand that this needs to be handled carefully, it's a really great resource to have out in your setting or have out in your early years. But obviously, again, it's about knowing your learner and if you think it's gonna get logged, then obviously don't use glass. But yeah, just kind of give them the opportunity to use it if you think they're cognitively ready for that. What a deep dish is gonna do is create the opportunity, like I've mentioned, for really, really submerging their hand in it, which is gonna create a really nice sort of sensory tactile massage on their hands. And it's almost chalky and powdery as well. So that's a really, really nice sensation. So that's why the depth is there. So that's quite a key thing for this activity. So to my bowl of pearl barley, a nice deep bowl of pearl barley, I'm gonna add things into it that essentially are going to be planted into the bowl. So this is just a bunch of herbs, the same as I used for the sensory art video that I did last week, check it out if you haven't already done so. And what we can do is plant that into the bowl and really, really kind of push it down. Um, so what that's gonna do, and I'm gonna push it really, really far down. What that's going to do is obviously engage our sense of smell for your learner. So we're getting that multi-sensory engagement of all the different kind of senses and that integration of them all together. Um, but what that's going to do is then create something that they can pull out of. Now there's a bit of resistance because of all the pearl barley, but not enough that it becomes a really, really hard activity. Um, but yeah, that's just gonna kind of create a really, really nice, I guess invitation to learn for them to kind of pull it out. Now you'll see now why the baking tray is here because if you've got a learner that does this, it's gonna go everywhere. 
Um, so that's why that's there. But again, it's a really, really nice sensation. And I've had learners before that absolutely love that sense of chaos and love that mess. And all children and learners love that kind of sense of mess. Um, and what a lovely sound to create from essentially quite a minimal action. Um, so you can have a lots of fun and lots of intensive interaction with that. And then in a similar way, you can add in baby gem, lettuce, leaves, that kind of stuff. Um, just so it looks like things are kind of growing out a bit and you can just pop those in. I feel like I'm on Blue Peter, guys. <laughs> Living the childhood dream. Here's one I made earlier. Um, okay, so we can pop those in like that. Um, and again, your learner can just kind of work on pulling it out. Again, what this is going to do is promote that sense of autonomy that I go on about all the time, um, because actually it's again something that they can do, something that they can, you know, create an effect with. It's that early cause and effect. Like, what happens if I pull it out? Oh, I get to hold it. Oh, it makes a sound. I can bring it to my mouth. Again, it's taste safe, so it doesn't matter. Um, but you can engage them in that lovely, intensive interaction. Oh, let's put it back. Oh, can you do that again? Oh, if you pulled that out, all of those kind of dialogues that you can kind of get in. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's one way of doing that. think your learner's ready for it, what you can then do is bury these even deeper. So what that's going to do is provide what we call object permanence. So it's a, uh, you know, this is here, we've pulled it out, oh, we're going to bury it really, really deep. Oh, where's it gone? You know, encourage that early exploration things like, oh, I found it, you found it. You know, it's burying things deep. Now, Obviously, there's a bit of a kind of stage in between that where you would bury something under something that's sort of semi-see-through so they can still see that it's there, but they can't quite get to it. Um, but burying things in messy play is a really, really nice way of engaging your learner um, and going to really, really encourage those skills of persistence. So if you're watching from an engagement model perspective or you're looking at engaging activities, that's a really good one for persistence. Um, now, I've popped this one in just with a little kind of leaf popping up there and that is really quite enticing it's like what is that i want to pull that out and again the weight of the seeds is just going to make that slightly harder but again not too difficult um and yeah they can just pull it out um the seeds are going to go everywhere but it's just a really really nice simple activity you know all learners of that sort of developmental age where they want to pull and kind of explore um, and find out what their bodies can do like simple activities that create an effect and that's why the baking tray is there it is messy it's fine motor and it's messy so prep it you know realize that it's going to be messy but anything can be swept up and it's not a wet messy play activity these can be swept up really really easily so just embrace the chaos have fun with the chaos and roll with the sense of fun that your learner's going to get from this activity Lastly, I have put in some good old fashioned spoons. Again, three different sizes, so you can introduce elements of early quantity and how many scoops you can do if your learner is ready for that. Again, grasping and holding that maintenance of grasp is a really nice way of doing it because sort of scooping and releasing and scooping and releasing is going to develop those skills needed to be able to feed yourself and those kind of things. So again, it's another activity that's really good for that. Um, be aware that association wise, your learner might then put it to their mouth because it's a spoon. Um, but again, it's a really nice way of practicing those self-help skills as well. So yeah, that's another addition that is really, really good to have. So always have spoons on hand as well. And that's me done for today. Super simple, effective activity, really great for one-to-one -one intensive interaction stuff. As I say, super messy. I'm probably going to find pearl barley in my kitchen for the next week, um, but it's a really, really great one. So do let me know if you use it. Don't forget the baking tray and I will see you next time for another video. So if you like the video today, please do give it a thumbs up down below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And I will see you next time for a brand new video on the Gensory YouTube channel. But until then, everybody, take care. Bye.